Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Brew, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Brew Sports Report. Without you guys and you ladies, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up those football gods here on day number two of Free Agent Frenzy. What we have here, of course, is the Dallas Cowboys doing what they do in free agency, which is signing their own and not taking a chance. Um, other teams are out there trying to build a roster. You can see New England is going crazy. They have literally spent over $150 million reloading that team. Beware, and I mean beware, of New England. New England is going to be coming back with the vengeance for next year. Trust me, they are. Uh, having had so many players that sat out from COVID, they were able to basically get out of being in cap hell and now have flushed or are flushed with cash, high draft picks, and now all of those players that sat out are coming back. They will be a really, really good team. For the Cowboys, of course, we ended up basically keeping our wide receiver core together. We ended up getting Cedric Wilson coming back, Noah Brown, and we ended up doing the restricted tag uh, tender uh, with Antoine Woods, so he's going to be back as well. But here's the quote from Stephen Jones. We've got to go out and find good value and be efficient in free agency as we try to build that defense. We've got to go out and find good value and be efficient in free agency. This is about where I'd like to take a fork and stick it in my eye because we've been doing this stuff for years. And the thing is, is how many years of doing good value has it helped the team? Did Don Terry Poe, good value, help the team? Did Clinton Ha Ha Dix, good value, help the team? Did Daryl Worley, good value, help the team? Gerald McCoy, good value, help the team? Emerson Griffin, good value, help the team. I dare say if we took packaged up all of those contracts right there, and instead of getting good value, blue light specials, guys that are past their prime that, or good value, and maybe got two good players that we might have spent our money a little better. The funny thing is, is this. What I've learned about good value, when I buy a tool, every time I bought a good value or a special purchase, it A, usually doesn't have enough power B, it usually doesn't have all of the things that you need it to do. And C, it doesn't last. What I find is if you can't get a good tool, you're better off waiting until you can because you're just throwing good money after bad. Good value. That's exactly what our defense looks like. Good value. $133 million on offense, $66 million on defense. Offense, top five. Defense, mm, bottom three. Well, our division rival, the Washington football team, has been trying to get a quarterback for quite a while. They got a scary defense. Washington, congratulations. They won the division. They built their defense by using draft picks, high draft picks. They've tried for years um, in free agency to build a team, and it didn't work. It didn't work. What you have to understand is you have to be using free agency as a tool to fill in spaces. You can't build a whole roster out of free agents, but you can sure supplement one if you make the right moves. Washington tried to get Matthew Stafford. I don't know if they looked at Carson Wentz. I doubt that one. We heard that they were you know, interested in Russell Wilson and Sean Watson. Heck, I heard Sam Darnold there for a minute. I heard Mitch Trubisky yesterday. And today, 
Ryan Fitzpatrick, late last night, signed a one-year, $10 million uh, contract with the Washington football team with uh, escalation costs of up to $12 million to get a chance to play for the Washington football team. I can tell you one thing. He's a gunslinger. He will throw it up. Terry McLuhan, I got to tell you, I guarantee you, that guy is happy today because he's got a gunslinger. You know that Washington will be throwing the football down the field. The thing about Ryan Fitzpatrick is Ryan Fitzpatrick seems to have like three or four really incredible games, and you look at him like, oh, my God, he's on an MVP tear. And then he kind of goes in the tank. But it will definitely bring some excitement to the Washington football team. Guaranteed they'll be selling some jerseys. Fits magic. But I wanted to, this morning, just go through a timeline. We have people that complain about our quarterback situation and Dak Prescott and things. The one thing the Cowboys have been fortunate for has been quarterback stability. I know we haven't won Super Bowls. I, I get that. But we've had at least stable quarterbacks. Ryan Fitzpatrick will end up being the 15th, 15th starting quarterback for the Washington football team since 2010. Don McNabb took over for Jason Campbell after Washington traded for him. Rex Grossman also played for him that year. The next year, Rex Grossman and John Beck. Then Washington drafted using three number ones and a second to get RG3. Kirk Cousins played one of those games that year, and the next year Kirk Cousins played a few more games. And it was back and forth, RG3, Kirk Cousins, RG3, Kirk Cousins. And then we sprinkled in a little bit of Colt McCoy. 2015, 16, and 17, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins after being franchise tagged twice, was let to go to Minnesota, in which case they paid Alex Smith. Alex Smith, week 10, messed up his leg. Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson played three games along with Colt McCoy. Even Butt Fumble got in on the action. And for Mark Sanchez, it went to Case Keenum. Dwayne Haskins back to Colt McCoy. Then 2020, Alex Smith, Dwayne Haskins, Kyle Allen. And I dare say, actually, they didn't have Heineke in there. They didn't even, 16, Heineke played in there. So, correction, the list I have actually stops at Kyle Allen, Dwayne Haskins, and Alex Smith. But there was Heineke there who also played for him. So Ryan Fitzpatrick, I believe, becomes the 16th starting quarterback in 11 years for the Washington football team. You can look at the Washington football team and what they have tried to do to get a quarterback. Three number ones and a second for RG3. A second and a third for Donovan McNabb and $40 million. A number one for Dwayne Haskins. $68 $68 million for Alex Smith. And now, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Washington seems to be the place that quarterbacks' careers go to die. Now, Ryan Fitzpatrick has made the NFL tour. Um, he survived a lot worse things than Washington. We'll see if he thrives in Washington and finally finds a home. But I got to tell you, Washington just became a better team, I believe. Uh, that's that's my own feeling. Washington, I'm scared of with that defense because when you have a defense like they do that can put pressure up the middle, something I wish the Cowboys could do, you're always going to be able to be in games. I don't care who you play. See Tampa Bay against Kansas City. All right, y'all, so that's it. Shout out to everybody who came in our live stream last night. We'll be here with any news if it happens with the Dallas Cowboys. But again, don't expect the Dallas Cowboys to be making major news. As Stephen Jones says, we're looking for value. You know what? 
screw your value. Get me a player. Get me a safety, a real safety, and get me a damn defensive tackle, okay? Uh, a, a one technique guy. Get, get me just one. Just get me one of each of those guys, and I'd be happy. Can you do that for me? Value my ass. Hope you have a great day.